our ears can never hear enough. You wonder why, no matter what you see, you still want to see another one. And no matter what you have had in life, you still want to do what? You are, your ears are still ready to listen to other things. What I want us to bring out of that Bible passage is that all things that God has put in the midst of man will lead to this, will stress man. Man will be stressed. Man will walk, there is going to be stress in work and he will be tired. Man will preach the gospel of God and yet he is going to stress himself in doing it. No wonder the Bible says the kingdom of God is preached and every man presses into the kingdom of God. By the time you start seeking God, it's not going to be so convenient as you think, but you will be able to achieve. That is a sign. But our topic today says rest is needed. And then Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 8 has made us understand that everything man does leads to stress. Man must just stress himself to do something. For man to achieve anything, there must be a little form of stress somewhere here, uh, here and there. That established. Everything in life leads to stress. Rest is the way your body can regain its energy after each stress. Rest is the way your body can regain its energy after every stress. Life is full of stress, but rest is the way your body can regain its energy after every stress. That is why the topic today says rest is needed. Rest is needed. Rest is needed. Everything in life is full of stress. Everything in life will engage your energy. Everything in life will consume, consume, um, consume your energy. That is why you and I, we need our body to rest when it needs to be rest. When it needs to be resting, sorry. Look at it now, we are in the summer period. At this period of life, you should try to find rest in your life, you should try to find rest in my life, physically. Your body needs to rest physically. And your body needs hydration. Try to take as much as as much water as you can, whenever you can. So our God understands that rest is important to man. We will see in the scriptures several instances where God has told every one of us to rest our body when the time is needed. When the time is needed, when the time is needed, you and I we need to rest our bodies. We need to sleep. We need to relax. We need to switch off all gadgets or anything that can engage you and just close your eyes and rest because that's the only way your body can regain after food. Eating food alone cannot make your body regain. You must eat and you must rest. We'll get there. So what do we mean by energy? Energy is the strength or ability to do something. Anything you do in life will consume your energy. As I'm talking, I'm consuming an amount of energy. If you think, you will consume energy. If you work physically, you will consume energy. And research has shown us that intellectual energy is consumes more than physical energy. When you think and meditate, or you, or you want to invent something, the energy you consume with your mind is more than the energy you consume when you carry a bag of a bag of rice or a bag of any commodity or item. Hallelujah to the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Amen. So God is so good in everything that he has created that he has balanced everything. God made us understand that there is going to be a time that we are going to work and there is going to be a time that we are going to do what? We are going to rest from our work. Hallelujah. Amen. Many people nowadays, they don't take rest seriously. That's why some people die before their time. There are some people that it's only stress that killed them, not actual sickness or spiritual attack or something. They were not able to rest one. They were not able to do some medical checkup on their body. They were not able to maintain their health and that their health deteriorated to a point whereby they died before their time. When your activities and your engagement, they are not properly managed, you can be overstressed to a point whereby you can even lose your life if you are not careful. 
Sicknesses will come in when you are overstressed and you don't rest. In 24 hours, for God knows maybe a month, two months, three months, you don't have time to rest. You are jumping from one activity to the other and you don't find just a little time to even take a break. Go to different institutions. There are periods of break where they'll tell you everybody, suspend what you are doing and just stay off. And you see some people, that is the time they still want to be engaging themselves. You have to stop that habit from today. And I pray that the Lord will guide us and help us in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Even God Almighty, on the seventh day, God rested. And we are going to read it out from the scripture. God did so many things on the first day, the second day, third day, fourth day, but on the seventh day, God did what? God rested from his work, one of the days. We are going to get the specific date out. So, this August season, please time, find time to rest. At least let your rest even be longer than the rest that you have been having before the summer. Summer is a period where you should rest. Anything you are doing should not be over engaging. You should not do as if it's a deadline thing or something that would, that would, that would cons over consume your energy. Now, that takes us to the aspect of why you need rest. My brothers and sisters have said it. You need rest. I need rest. Even God that is immortal, rested. How much more you and I that are mortals? God that is a spiritual being, he rested from his own works. You that you are physical, me that are physical, we don't want to find time to rest. If you don't pick a day to rest, one day your body will pick a day that you don't like. Learn to hard rest to your activities. Let there be a time in a day where you will suspend everything and just close your eyes and stay off. Let there be a time that there is no kind of activity you will be doing except being on your maybe bed and resting, sleeping, or eating and sleeping. Let that happen at least for three weeks in a particular season of your life. And a, a good season to choose rest is in the summer. The summer is a good season to choose rest. Because look at it now. We have used half of the year, seven months. This is the eighth month. Out of 12 months, for us to use seven months of activities, continuous activities, uh -uh, we need to rest, please. You need rest, I need rest. Now, why do you need rest? Number one, because of work stress. Any, even a student that is going to school goes through stress. As far as you trick, as far as you think, as far as you write, as far as you talk, you are going through what? Stress. And stress is anything that is consuming your energy. Stress is not the one that is too much. When, some people, when they say they are stressed, it is when they are overstressed. That is why they say they are stressed. Anything you do that consumes your energy is a stress. It's a stressor on its own. It is when it now becomes too much that you now say, ah, I'm stressed. That is when it is becoming too much. But your stress started when you started the work. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, number one reason why we rest is because of work stress. Let us go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 3. Let us see that work will lead to stress already. As I'm teaching, as I'm preaching, as I'm doing everything, we are already getting stressed. But after the work, what do you do? What you do is what determines how your body will, re will regain its energy or not. Genesis chapter 2, verse 3. Genesis 2, verse 3. He blessed the seventh day. God blessed the seventh day. And set it apart as a special day. And he set it apart as a special day. Because by that day. Because by that day. He had completed his creation. He had completed his creation. And stopped working. And he stopped working. <laughs> Can you imagine? When you stop working, what are you doing? You are resting. And God stopped working. The same Bible says, my father walked in there too, on, and I walk. That is Yeshua talking. But guess what? The father that started work in Genesis, he stopped working at the point in time and he rested. My own father says, Genesis chapter 2 verse 3, Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Hallelujah. God, I said, why do you need rest? Because of work stress. God that cannot go through stress still rested from all his works. He did his work and he rested. He just took a break. God took a break. My brothers and sisters, nowhere to take a break. Please. Even if it's just
our mothers that are in the kitchen taking care of children know when to take a break. There is no work in life that doesn't lead to stress. Every work is a stress. Know when to do what? Take a break. Know when to take a break. It will help you not only now, forever and ever. As far as you are in this physical body, learn to take a what? A break. So Genesis chapter 2 verse 3, God has set the template of rest for us. When you work, at the, after you get to a point, you stop, you stop, you complete your work, complete it and stop it and watch and rest. Because work will still continue. Work does not finish in this life. Let me let you know. There is no work that finish. It's just season by season. The work will come and it will go. Look at footballers. They are also in their resting season now. Summer breaks. If any footballer is playing football now, they are only playing friendly match and, 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 and some other matches that are not competitive. The competition, major competitions of the world in football, they are already, they, after the Champions League that was played, everybody has rested. Champions League is the last competition globally that is recognized as a football competition. After which all the clubs, whether in Europe or in Spain, or just mention those major clubs in, 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 in just mention the country or the continent. All of them are on break now, they are in their resting place. Many of them have to rest now, regain their strength, they make time for their family, be happy with their family, and do things that are not stressful, no competition, no stress. So, God rested on the seventh day. Please, my brothers and sisters, find time to rest. Number two reason why we rest is that it is God's commandment. Exodus chapter 34 verse 21. Exodus 34 verse 21. God commanded human beings to rest. I don't know why you want to kill yourself. And anybody that is listening to me. God commanded human beings to rest in Exodus chapter 34 verse 21. Exodus 34. You have six days in which to do your work. You have six days in which to do your work. But do not work on the seventh day. Do not work on the seventh day. Not even during plowing time or harvest. Do you imagine? Not during plowing time and even harvest time. Don't work on the seventh day. You must find a day to rest. Exodus chapter 34 verse 21. No, even if your crop is in the farm, that's what they are telling you in, the, in Exodus chapter 30, 30, 34 verse 21. Even if you have goods that are coming, on the seventh day, don't go and collect it. Go and rest, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, men and women, daddies and mommies, grandfathers and grandmothers, and whichever category of human being you fall into. Find a day to stay off work. Find a day to rest. My passion says, Six days you shall walk, but on the seventh day you shall rest. In a plowing time and in a harvest, you shall rest. The plowing time is the time that they plow the farm for the, so that you can farm. And harvest time is the time you, you collect your crops that you have planted that have grown well. But on the seventh day, no matter the plow, no matter the harvest, stop working. No matter the program, whether it is <laughs> Let me even say, whether it is a church program, you must have a time to rest from church programs. You must have a time to rest from family programs. You must have a time to rest from your work programs. Your personal ambitions and your career, you must have a time where you will be resting from those things. Because if you don't rest, your body will pick a day for you. The topic remains, rest is needed. The topic remains, rest is needed. The topic remains, rest is needed. Number three reason why we rest is that the journey of life is more than the present journey that you are. By the grace of God, where I am today now, what is ahead of me is more than what and where I've been coming from in my journey of life. The same thing is applicable to everybody listening to me now. If you are 16 years old, you still have several years ahead of you. If you are 30 years old, you still have several years ahead of you. If you are 70 years old, you still have at least 30 active years ahead of you. I'm telling you the fact. Moses said at the age of 80, 
I am seen as strong as a young man. That was what Moses said. At the age of 80, and the psalmist said, by the grace of God, at the age of 70, every age after 70 years old is by the grace of God that we are living, according to the book of Psalms. By the time you are 70, it is known that you are at the grace period in life, from 70 to 100 and beyond. That's the grace period of your life. But I want you to know that, nevertheless, at that grace period of your life, or whatever period of life that you are, find time to rest. Because the journey that is ahead of you in life, in your active life, let us say your active life is between 20, okay, maybe 3 years old to 100 years old. Because after 100 years old, nobody can expect you to come and be doing certain things. From 3 years old to 100 years old, whichever age you are in life, the journey that is ahead of you is more than the journey that is behind you. So find time to rest, my brother. I have said it before, and I said work does not finish. You will do your own and leave it. The next generation will come and do their own and leave it. That is how the work of life will continue to progress till Jesus comes back. Because Jesus will come back one day and everything will end. But before then, the journey of life, where you are in life, what is ahead of you is more than what you have achieved. Let us go to 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings 19 verse 5 to 7. 1 Kings 19, 5 to 7. So that you will know that yes, God was talking to Elijah. He said, lay down under the tree. And fell asleep. And fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said, An angel from God touched Elijah and said, Wake up and eat. Wake up and eat. He looked around and saw a loaf of bread. He saw bread. And a jar of water and, and his head. And water and something and items. He ate and drank. He and ate and drank. And drank and he rested. I told you that when it comes to resting, you eat and you rest. You eat, and if you eat alone, you have not rested. Rest must follow your food, yes? Verse 7. The lost angel returned and woke him up. The lost angel returned to him and woke him up. The second time. The second time. Saying, say, get up and eat. Eat again, second time, within the short space of time. Second time, yes? All the trip will be too much for you. All the journey will be too much for you. That's what another version says. The journey ahead of you who are, is already too much. I'm telling you. So for your journey that is ahead of you, not to be too much for you, please rest now when you can rest. This is summer period. We are in August. This is summer period. By the time August has passed and September has passed, the journey of November, November December, it starts from October, sorry, September, in the middle of September or end of September, all the holiday season will end. You now have a new journey from October, November, December. And the Bible is telling us that the journey ahead of you is much, is stressful. Rest now. Because this is your season. Look at when the angel was coming to Elijah. At a particular time, the angel will come. And the angel will tell you, the first time he came, eat, rest and sleep. The angel came back again, eat, rest and sleep. Because the journey ahead of you will be too much for you. So if you don't rest now, you will die in that journey. That's what the angel was telling Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 5 to 7. The angel made Elijah to realize that if you don't rest and eat now, you will die because of the journey that is ahead of you. That's why you see people, people of God and people in the world now, at a very young age, they are dead. You just say that this one died, nothing happened to him. This one died, nothing happened to him. But nobody knows the stress levels. Nobody knows how they are managing their life. Nobody knows the activity levels of their life that led them to it. Um, I can say that 90% of Africans cannot manage stress. And many people in the world like that. 80%. Nobody is taught stress management. Nobody. But actually there is stress in life. And I want you to know that the journey ahead of everybody is always more than the one that they have overcome. So find time to rest so that you don't die before your time. We will not die before our time in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. I will not die before my time in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. So I must find time to rest so that I don't die before my time. So when we talk about rest is needed as a topic, the aspect we have just completed is why you need to rest. Why you need rest. Now, when to rest? What time should you, 
should you rest? Listen to me, my brothers and sisters. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 4 makes us understand that to everything, there is a season. And there is a time for every purpose under the heaven. And there's nothing in this world that is not under the heaven, that is not under the sun. I've seen people quote that scripture and yet still miss their timing in life. May we not miss our timing in life in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. May God teach us timing in life in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. I've seen people where that go and rest when it's time they should t- stay off things and they still keep on pushing. My brothers and sisters, we will not miss our timing in life in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. What are the times in life when you can rest? By now, you should know that there are some times you can do the right thing at the wrong time. It's a lesson of life. You can be doing the right thing at the wrong time. What makes you right or what makes your decision right now is about the time you take the decision. The time you take a decision is what determines whether the decision is right or wrong. It's a major determiner of whether your decision in life will be right or wrong. Or will be helpful or not helpful. The time you take a decision in life is when is what will determine a major determiner of whether the decision will be right or not or wrong. When to rest, number one time to rest is after stress, after stress, after work. This is a season that is after a lot of work in the past, from January to July. A lot of work has been happening. Few rest in between. But we now need a longer rest so that we can regain ourselves for the remaining January, from the remaining December to uh, October to December, December to next year, July. So August is like the middle between seasons of life, major seasons of life. Many seasons. Every season of in, in, in the European countries they have four seasons. Why in the African countries they have two seasons? But I can tell you that all around the world, August, September, August is the middle between every season, every calendar season, every calendar year. August is the middle. If you get to that August and you don't rest yourself and find time to rest yourself, you will destroy yourself in the next season. That will not be our portion in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. So after stress, you need to rest. First King chapter 19 verse 4. Look at what happened in chapter 19 verse 4 before it got, it got to verse 5 to 7. First Kings 19 4. First Kings 19 4. When to rest, number one, after work. God rested on the seventh day. After all his work, he rested from his work. First Kings 19 4. Yes? Elijah worked a whole day. Did you hear that? Elijah worked for a whole day, 24 hours. Into the wilderness. Into the wilderness. He stopped and sat down in the in the shape of a tree. He stopped and sat down in the shape of a tree, not and doing anything. He and needed to rest. And wish he, he would die. And wish that he would die. It's too, it's too much, Lord, he prayed. He prayed to God that, okay, this wala is too much, this stress is too much, something is too much, yes? Take away my life. Take away my life. And I might as well be dead. We know that that was after he had dealt with 12, uh, 20, well, 40 prophets of Baal, something that incident, yes, I might as well be what? Be dead. The point there was that he has walked himself into the wilderness. He has stressed himself. He had defeated prophets of God and he had also trekked long distance into the wilderness. He got a time, Elijah, that was that was like <laughs> semi-angel. That's what we call Elijah because what happened to Elijah in his life, he was like he was not human. He had sat down and he rested. Elijah that would call fire from him sat down and rested. You, you have not caught fire. We have not caught fire. We want to kill ourselves. After work, after stress, after any activity, rest. Sit down and take a break. Number two, when to rest? After work, like I said, Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. Let us see people that work and after they rest. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. God did so many things before he rested in verse 3. Yes? And so the whole universe was completed. So the whole work of this whole earth was completed. Genesis by chapter 2, verse 1. Verse 2. Verse 2. By, by the seventh day, God finished what he had been doing. And by the seventh working. day, he finished what he had been doing and he stopped working. Which day do you stop working? Which day do you finish what you have, want to do and you stop? And you just take a break and you just eat and rest, eat and sleep, eat and sleep. Which day? 
Which day do you stop what you are doing and just eat and sleep? Eat and sleep. Which day? So, brothers and sisters, please find that day. God wants you to rest when you need to rest. God is not a God of 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 of, of, of imbalance. The God that I know from this word of God, God is a God of balance, balance, work-life balance, spiritual and physical balance. Some people will say physical by spiritual controls the physical. My brother and sister, there is a balance between the physical and the spiritual. Hear it from my mouth today. There is a balance between the physical and the spiritual. They both control one another. It's not only spiritual that is controlling physical. Physical is controlling spiritual. Spiritual is controlling physical at the same pace. If you want to worship God, you open your mouth physically to praise God. And spiritually, things are triggered. Daniel prayed and God did what? Sent an angel. And when that angel did not deliver the message, Daniel prayed again with his physical mouth and God sent angel Michael to go and deal with Prince of Persia. What am I trying to say? Physical and spiritual, there is a balance in between the two. And God is a God of balance. God is not a God of imbalance. God is a God of balance. So, please, balance your work and your, your resting life. And your physical and your spiritual and your work and your rest. Then the final time to rest. There are many other times, but for our purpose of the message of today, you are not supposed to rest when you should be working or struggling, my brothers and sisters. But we thank God that today we are in the resting phase because we are in the resting season, the summer season all around the world. For everyone listening to me from any part of the world, we are in the summer season. This is a season where you should rest. Depending on your job, there are seasons in your according to your job that you know when you should rest. But please take your rest. But there is a time not to rest. Remember, I said that your decisions in life will determine on the who is determined by the time you take it, whether it is right or wrong. You can do the right thing at the wrong time, and you can do the wrong thing at the right time. It's possible. So it is the time that you are taking the action that will determine whether the action is appropriate or inappropriate. The time that you are taking the action is what will determine whether the action is appropriate or inappropriate. A child that should be in school, studying and acquiring his degrees, going about playing, later on in the future, that child will, be, will regret that decision. Seeking for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, if you don't seek first, Remember, even the scripture said, seek it forth. He did not say, seek only the kingdom of God. He said, seek forth, so that when you add all of that, it shall be added unto you. So that is to say, when you should seek God first, please seek God first. What am I trying to illustrate with this instance? The timing of your actions, the timing of your decision, the timing of your actions, the timing of your decision. Now, look at somebody in the scripture that was resting at the wrong time. There is a time that you can be resting and that time can be wrong. That's why I'm telling you that and we are talking about rest today. It's not every time that rest is correct. When you have not done anything, when you have not achieved anything, when you should, when you should be on the field working and you are resting, you are wrong. First Samuel chapter 11 verse 1 to 2. Let us see somebody that rested at the wrong time. King David. The time when King David should be in battle, he was resting. You know, I've been saying it before that it is good to rest, it is good to rest, but I'm telling you that there is a time to rest and there is a time not to rest. If you rest in the day that you should not be resting, you will be in trouble that day. Hallelujah. And if you don't rest the day that you should be resting too, you will be in trouble that day. You see that life is very dynamic. The day that you should rest, if you don't rest, you will die before your time, most likely. And the day that you should not be resting, and you are resting, you will get into serious trouble, another serious trouble. Let us see another person that got into serious trouble. He was resting when he should not be resting. First, second Samuel chapter 11, verse 1 to 2. Second Samuel 11, 1 to 2. King David was resting the day he should not be resting. Second Samuel 11, 1 to 2. The Father is free. Listen to this beginning very well. Listen to this introduction very well. It is very crucial. Look at the season. You know I said resting is in the summer. But this was said the following spring. And there are ways. In the foreign countries or European countries, there are four seasons. We have the spring, the uh, autumn, the summer, and the winter. And I said summer is the major one where the holidays are months where you should be resting. 
But every other season, there is work in between. We have the spring, this, uh, the, the autumn, the, the spring, the fall or autumn, and the winter. Look at it. In the spring, are we supposed to be resting in the spring? No, we are not supposed to be having a long rest in the spring. In the spring, everybody should be active in that season of life. In Nigeria, we have just two major seasons. Dry and rainy season. But in this other season, let us see what happens. In the spring of the year, not in the summer. We are in the summer, August, September, we are in the summer now. So we can rest for long. But in the spring, we don't rest as much as we rest in the summer. Go on. At the time of the year, when kings usually go to war. At the time of the year, when kings usually go to war. David sent out the jo Joab. David sent Joab, yes, and his servants. With his officers. And the Israelite army. An army. They defeated the Ammonites. He defeated Ammonites and so on and so forth. And beside the city of Rabba. Uh -huh. But David himself stayed in Jerusalem. David, the leader of the battle, was resting while his armies were fighting. In the spring, when kings should not be resting. One day. One day. Look at how he got into trouble now because he was resting at the wrong time. Late in the afternoon. Late in the afternoon. David got up from his nap. David got up from his nap. He sleep. Nap is a sleep. And what? And went to the place of. And went to the place. He went to the roof. Yes. And went to the palace roof. Yes. As he walked up, around up there. Somebody that should be in the party was on the roof resting. He saw a woman taking a bath. He saw a woman taking a bath. He saw the nakedness of a woman. She was very beautiful. She was beautiful. And let me finish the story. That was somebody's wife, Uriah's wife. He took his wife forcefully. He impregnated her. He kept on committing errors from that day. He killed that Uriah, the owner of the wife, and he took his wife by force, and God punished David for that. What was the major lesson here? The armies of David in the spring, I told you there are four seasons of the year, according to, some, according to the global settings. Spring, autumn or fall, summer and winter. Summer is the major time where we have holiday all around the world, where we rest, majorly all around the world. Every other season, there is work to be done. Even look at the football calendar, the football seasons. You see that it's still August, summer, that they rest a lot. But David was in the spring when he should be active. In that same spring, his armies were fighting. He was sleeping at the rooftop. Because of that sleeping, he saw a woman that was naked, that was bathing. If he was in his walk and on his journey, would he see a naked woman bathing? He would not see a naked woman bathing. If he was in the battle, he will see a woman and he will not even be triggered. Because this is what we are talking about, life and death. When it comes to battle, those days they used to fight battle. But David was resting, his mind was so relaxed in the midst of a season where he should not be relaxed. And let me tell you one secret that I told you. I said there is a balance between spiritual and physical. In the spiritual and in the physical realm, they all respect time. As far as you are alive, your physical and spiritual life, they only re they respond to time. They respond to what? Time. If you have not had it from anybody before, you have had it from my mind today, and I pray that the Lord will direct you and help you in the mighty name of Yeshua. In the physical and in the spiritual life, they respond to what? To time. You must take note of time. That time when David was resting, he should be in the battlefield, he should be fighting war. So I said rest is needed. Rest, I've said the, well, the importance of rest, why we need rest. But when to rest matters, because if you rest at the wrong time, you will be in trouble. Just the way David went into trouble, because he was resting at the wrong time. In the mighty name of Yeshua, God will give us discretion to do the right thing at the right time in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. 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 God will give us the grace, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to do the right thing at the right time in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. And everyone listening to us, we pray that God will give you the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding also to do the right thing at the right time in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. So, we use this opportunity to pray a prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, please give me the grace to do the right thing at the right time. Where I need to rest, Father, help me to rest. Where I need to be active, let me to act, help me to be active in the mighty name of Yeshua. Let me to pray. Father, I pray, O Lord, in the mighty name of Yeshua, for everyone listening to us and for every one of us here. Father, give us the wisdom and understanding to rest when we need to rest and to walk when we need to walk in the mighty name of Yeshua. We pray for everyone listening to us also. Father, for everyone of them that
that have not accepted Yeshua as their Lord and personal Savior, this is an opportunity. Father, we pray for them that you convince them, you come into their heart today, you direct their life from today and forth, and your Holy Spirit will not depart from them in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. You will give them the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to do the right thing at the right time in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. This season of rest, Father, let them have rest in you in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. Let them rest properly with their physical body and also with their mind and their intellect in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. And Father, every energy they need to regain, please give it unto them and give it unto us in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. And we pray that, Father, your Holy Spirit will continue to guide us in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. And we will make it at the end of our lives in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. Once more, we thank you for watching and we urge you to like, subscribe, share to your loved ones and to your enemies. And we pray that the Lord will help you all in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen.